Michael Carroll was an English garbage collector who won £10 million in the UK National Lottery in 2002. That would have been worth around $20 million at the time. He became a tabloid newspaper celebrity for a while and was known as the King of the Chavs. There was even a TV movie made about him in 2006. In an interview shortly after his lottery win, Carroll said that he would not be tempted into spending his money lavishly and only wanted to buy a three-bedroom house near a lake where he could go fishing. That sounds like a good plan, but it's not exactly the way things worked out. You don't usually get nicknamed the King of the Chavs while fishing quietly at a lake. Carroll quickly developed a taste for drugs, alcohol, and partying. In 2005, he was given 240 hours of community service after it was found that while drunk, he had been catapulting steel balls from his Mercedes van at parked cars and shop windows. You're not meant to do that. Almost any fisherman will tell you that catapulting steel balls from a van will scare the fish away. It was noted in court that he had accumulated 42 offences on his record by 2006. In May 2010, less than 10 years after winning the lottery, Carroll applied for his old job as a garbage collector again, telling the press that he had no regrets about the way in which he had spent his winnings. In 2013, he spent three months in a hotel for the homeless after being unable to find work. He's not the only lottery winner that ran into trouble. In 2005, Roger and Laura Griffiths won £1.8 million on the UK National Lottery. They bought a big house and Roger got to record an album with the band he played with in university. The interest alone on the couple's lottery winnings would have earned them more than the median UK household income at the time. Some bad investments and failed business ventures of course followed. In 2010, their house even burnt down. They ended up divorced and by 2013, just eight years after the big lottery win, Roger had just seven pounds left in his bank account. Evelyn Adams, a clerk in a convenience store, really beat the odds. She managed to win the New Jersey lottery twice, first in 1985 and again in 1986, collecting a total of $5.4 million. She was the first person in the history of the New Jersey lottery to win multiple million dollar jackpot prizes. By 2012, Adams had spent all of her winnings, mostly gambling her wealth away at the tables in Atlantic City casinos and squandering money on a string of unsuccessful business deals, which included buying the convenience store that she used to work for. Today, she reportedly lives in a trailer. We've all heard this type of story about how something like a lottery win, which at first appeared to be a great blessing, slowly revealed itself to be a curse. The downward spiral in these stories is usually brought about by a number of factors like winners partying and overspending, investing their winnings poorly, family and friends asking for handouts, or even that the winner becomes a mark for criminals and con men. We learn in these stories that for lottery winners, life without a job or responsibility quickly becomes meaningless. They become distant from their true friends and soon lose everything. These types of scenarios, as we've just seen, have all played out for many lottery winners. But despite the curse that says winning the lottery will ruin your life, a number of studies from around the world show that winning big cash prizes often leads to big increases in life satisfaction over the long term. The lottery winner's curse simply isn't true. Now, before I dig into the research on this topic, let me tell you about today's video sponsor. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively through their user-friendly app. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and more, with new lessons added monthly. They have a great range of statistics and finance courses, which I've been exploring over the last few weeks. 
you tell the app how much time you want to devote to your lessons each day, the app works out your level of competency and then starts giving you lessons. Apparently it's six times more effective learning from an interactive app than just watching a lecture. Whether you're learning math, computer science or data analysis, Brilliant's thousands of bite-sized interactive lessons help you master key concepts and build to more advanced topics. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Patrick or click on the link in the video description. The first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So what does academic literature say about the curse of winning the lottery? Well, a 2018 NBER paper entitled Long Run Effects of Lottery Wealth on Psychological Wellbeing, led by researchers with the Stockholm School of Economics, Stockholm University and NYU, studied 3,000 Swedish lottery winners who had won a combined $277 million between 5 and 22 years earlier. The researchers asked them questions like, all things considered, how happy would you say you are? And taking all things together in your life, how satisfied would you say you are with your life these days? The participants reported being generally more satisfied with life after winning the lottery. Large prize winners reported experiencing sustained increases in overall life satisfaction that persist for over a decade and show no evidence of dissipating with time, according to the researchers. What about mental health and happiness then? According to the paper, no strong evidence was found that lottery winners ended up being happier in the long run, but they did find strong evidence that the lottery winners were more satisfied with their lives years after winning. So what about the stories that lottery wins estranged the winners from their friends? I think we can all imagine how that might happen, where your newfound wealth makes your friends jealous, or maybe you just find yourself wanting to do new things that your old friends can't afford to do. So you find new, wealthier friends, friends who possibly don't understand you the way your old friends did. Well, a recent study from researchers at the London School of Economics and Warwick Business School finds that people who win more than £10,000 on the lottery end up spending more time socialising with their friends and less time talking to neighbours after winning the lottery. The research finds that the more someone wins in the lottery, the more new friends they're likely to make, which they say is consistent with the complementary effect of income on the strength of social ties. The opposite is true with regards to social ties held for more instrumental reasons, such as talking to neighbours. Winning more in the lottery reduces the size of an individual's support network, and this is not overly surprising, as wealthier people don't tend to rely on their friends and family as much for support as poorer people do. The social ties that get broken are different to friendships. They're social ties that are primarily useful for practical reasons and require little emotional investment. These are apparently often substituted away with an increase in income. According to a 2016 paper by Bianchi and Vose, higher socioeconomic status individuals prioritize social ties that are not necessarily valuable for resources, but instead for emotional well-being. Tests for robustness in the study found that average lottery win effects tend to be skewed by the really big winners, suggesting that small to medium sized wins below £10,000 or dollars are often not enough to change people's social ties in a meaningful manner. According to the paper, increases in income can have a number of significant consequences on social behaviour. First, they have an impact on the resources available for creating and maintaining social networks. Basically, wealthier people have more time and money to socialise, and so they socialise more. 
Secondly, increases in income have the potential to influence social consumption, which lubricates social relationships. Essentially, as people's wealth grows, they can better afford to choose where to go and who to spend time with. And it's only so surprising based on all of this that lottery winners spend more time with close friends and less time with neighbors and acquaintances after their big win. A vast literature exists showing the strong positive relationship between income and good health and a strong negative association with mortality. The direction of causality is, however, more dubious. Do people become wealthier because they have good health to start with, or are wealthy people healthier because their wealth buys greater access to resources like good food, gyms, and healthcare? A 2002 paper called Estimating the Effect of Income on Health and Mortality Using Lottery Prizes as Exogenous Source of Variation in Income found that lottery winners tend to be healthier and live longer than non-lottery winners. A 2022 paper called Income Windfalls and Overweight Evidence from Lottery Wins found that in the UK, a £1,000 lottery win reduces the risk of an individual being overweight among low-educated individuals by 4.5 to 5 percentage points, 12 months after the lottery win. Maintaining a healthy weight may of course be a luxury good. The wealthy may have better access to fresh foods, gym memberships and housing in healthy environments, or higher income individuals might moderate their weight and strive to be healthier as they compare themselves to other people who are in better shape. But one way or another, according to this research, lottery wins tend to be correlated with better overall health and a healthier body mass index. So why do we believe that everything ends horribly for lottery winners then? Well, to start with, it might just feel good for people to believe that great wealth, which seems out of reach, will only bring bad things. But in most articles about the lottery winner's curse, there's a frequently cited statistic from the National Endowment for Financial Education, which states that 70% of lottery winners go bankrupt just a few years after winning. It's worth clarifying that in 2018, the NEFE came out with a press release saying that those numbers were not backed up by any research. A study looking at 35,000 Florida lottery winners, the craziest kind of lottery winners, found that only 6% of the cohort later filed for bankruptcy. That is a lot less than the 70% that is frequently reported. The Swedish study that I mentioned earlier showed that most lottery winners don't blow through their winnings, and in fact they usually don't even quit their jobs. The researchers found that people who won large sums of money were typically still wealthier 10 years after their win compared to people who won small sums of money. Lottery jackpot winners do typically cut down on the hours they work after the win, but they do this mostly by taking longer vacations. The Swedish study only studied lottery winners who won between $100,000 and $2 million. There are prizes that are much larger than that around the world, and really huge prizes might have really different effects. The Florida Lottery Winners study did find that lottery winners in general were slightly more likely than the average person to eventually file for bankruptcy, but that bankruptcy was still an unusual outcome for this group. Interestingly, the size of the win made no difference in the probability of a lottery winner filing for bankruptcy. It's maybe not too surprising that people who play the lottery or who gamble in general are more likely to go bankrupt than average. Research shows that the bottom three quintiles in socioeconomic status spent the most on lottery tickets and the highest socioeconomic group spent the least on the lottery. Evelyn Adams, the woman who won the New Jersey lottery twice before losing all of her money, allegedly spent $25 per week on lottery tickets for several years before her first win. 
After the first win, she upped her weekly spending to $100 per week on lottery tickets before winning again. The odds of winning the first jackpot were 1 in 3.2 million. The second, 1 in 5.2 million. I guess the true story is a little bit less exciting than the one that most people believe. Lottery winners usually don't go nuts, quit their jobs and blow all the money. They typically get healthier, slimmer and use their good fortune to increase their financial security, to take more holidays and to spend more time with their closest friends. If you found this video interesting, you should watch my most recent video on the Turkish economy next. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Brilliant.org, using the link in the description below. Have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye.